Hello everybody and welcome to this video which is kindly sponsored by Squarespace. So I'm going to try something completely new now. I'm going to change the background of the front page to a video because well this is just a generic background. So go in to change the background and there is an option that you can see there for video. So with a quick privacy break as I select the file out of my hard drive system and while that uploads you can go and check out how fast you want the video to play back and also some filter options. And there's also a user-friendly feature for mobile users who might not want to have to load up a large video playing in the background, so you can have a static image there instead. So I'll select one of those. Now, to be fair, I just hit the poor upload system with a 4K drone recorded video, so it took about three, four minutes to actually upload the whole thing. But once it does upload, you can see it integrates seamlessly, and this is an event that the Paladins of Chivalry did at Heaver Castle, and not everyone set their tents up yet. But you might immediately notice that's made the text somewhat difficult to see. Obviously, I haven't actually edited this yet, but it's very easy to go in and switch the colors so you can actually see something over the video overlay. And with that, our first video integration onto the website is complete. That was easy. So if after all these little mini tutorials I've been doing, you think you could build a website for maybe ideally naval history purposes, but you never know, you might want to do it for some other reason, then head over to squarespace.com forward slash Drakinafel. You can get a free trial, and once you're ready, that little link will give you 10% off your first website or domain. So thanks once again to Squarespace for sponsoring the video, and on with the main show. Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learning About the Insert Title of Navy Here with Drac. Now, you will have seen in a previous episode, hopefully, about the High Seas Fleet, Kaiserliche Marine of the World War I fleet of Germany. I said we were going to look separately at the World War II fleet of Germany. So that's what we're going to be doing today, the Kriegsmarine, with a little bit of reference also to the Reichsmarine, which was its immediate predecessor in the, in the interwar period. Now, because the Kriegsmarine was a relatively short-lived naval service, only coming into existence in the early 1930s and obviously going out of existence in the middle of the 1940s, there's nowhere near as much in-depth material as there is for, say, the Royal Navy, the US Navy, the Japanese Navy, or even for the Kaiserliche Marine, because it doesn't have that kind of depth of field. So if you're looking for something that looks into you know, the background of why it developed the way it did, etc., then you're probably looking for more general history of the German Navy, or if you're looking for technical specs, the more general books covering that. So in that respect, if you look at my previous video, you'll see the two volumes by Eric Groner covering German naval vessels. He goes all the way up to 1945, so that includes Kaiserliche Marine, Reichsmarine, and Kriegsmarine ships. So I won't go over there, that, those two books again, although they are both there. Um, what I'm going to go over instead is a bunch of what I, I guess you could call snapshot books. So they look mainly at specific ship types within the Kriegsmarine. There's a relatively limited number of them. Um, and some books that are either part of a series or which stand alone I can recommend look at the general campaigns and so forth. Now, if you're interested in further reading, there is still quite a considerable amount of it, but a lot of that is covered by more general topic books that I have. So this is my German only section. And as we get onto subsequent videos and we see some of those general topic uh, shelves, then you'll probably see some more of those books that are covering the campaigns and so forth in a bit more detail and the interwar build up as well. So one of the first ones that I can recommend, published by Naval Institute Press, if you happen to be in the States or if you're in the UK, uh, Seaforth does them as well. Um, but US and I are kind of the progenitors of it. This big lump that I just pulled out. So these, this is a series by uh, Gerhard Koop and Klaus Peter Schmolke, I think. Um, and these are basically almost every ship that the Germans actually ran for, at least for the surface vessels, of World War II. And they're all pretty good introductory um, books. So, let's well, just going from the top, German light cruisers of World War II. Um, so that's the, <laughs> the Königsbergs and the Leipzigs. Not that you'd want to spend a huge amount of time necessarily looking at those, but you can see you've got the different profiles, um, plenty of pictures, and a fair bit of information 
you can see armor, construction details, armament, and lots of interesting cross sections as well. So, you know, if you want to know, for example, why the Königsbergs have that offset turret arrangement aft, there's an explanation in here for you. And it goes on. So, well, you've got destroyers, so technically that should go before light cruisers. You've got heavy cruisers of the Admiral Hipper class, which is, again, pretty much the same kind of thing and has specific operational histories for each ship. You then have the, I know it says pocket battleships, but that's what the media used at the time. Obviously, we can't call them heavy cruisers, but anyway, they are the Deutschlands. So once again, the triple eleven uh, four and a half turrets, the full frame plan. And again, once you get back, to the uh, to the back end of the book there's full operational history so this is a map of the battle of the river plate so then we get up to battleships of the Scharnhorst class same layout again and then finally battleships of the Bismarck class so Bismarck and Tirpitz and uh, once again you know same kind of layout all good and also has various um, op parts in there which tell you when they were modified. This applies to pretty much all of them. So, for example, when when did Tirpitz get her quadruple torpedo launchers and when did her anti-aircraft armament change? All in here. So each of those is a pretty good pocket introduction to specific classes of ship. Then you've got the smaller ships. So I am quite partial to this one, Schnellbutter. A complete operational history. That's the S. This one's by Lawrence Patterson. So this is the S boats or E boats, basically the small German fast attack craft. Um, and obviously, a lot of their fights were with British MTB and MGB flotillas. There is a similar, if slightly thinner, volume. I can get that out of here. Come on. German S boats in action in the Second World War. Um, again, you know, pretty good read, but as a, a little bit thinner on the ground than the Schnellbutter one. So personally, I'd recommend the Schnellbutter one because um, I like that kind of thing. So that covers basically your surface ships that actually entered service, all the way from small fast attack craft up to the biggest battleships. Now, granted, it doesn't. There's not a lot in there about the minesweepers and other coastal escorts and so on and so forth but again this is introductory so most people look at those kinds of uh, small craft in when they dig a little bit deeper and if we ever get around to doing dig deeper videos then obviously i can show you some of those the other thing you might notice if the resolution on the video is high enough is that an awful lot of these videos are actually videos an awful lot of these books are actually in german um, which as i mentioned also in the video on the Kaiserliche Marine is why I'm not recommending them to start with on a primarily English speaking channel because, well, um, let's take this one for example, Ernst Haschagen's U-Boote Werftwarts. There's actually two copies of that somehow I've managed to end up with, but never mind. Um, or this one the Deutsche Kriegsmarine, 1934 to 1945. Yes, I can say it in German, but I choose not to. Uh, for 50 Jahren, Schlaft Schiff Bismarck by Breyer and Coop. So um, the technical documentation side of things, which, uh, well, as the name suggests, is a little bit more technical. And I'm going to pop that back there. So they do exist, but not the, really the subject for today. Um, what else can we recommend? Unfortunately, most of my U-boat stuff is actually in German. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a little bit of a, a, a small problem, <laughs> but maybe at some point in the future, I can correct that and talk to you a bit more about books I can recommend on U-boats from the terms of their technical specifications. But in terms of their actual activities, this one's pretty good. Um, the German Naval History, The U-Boat War in the Atlantic, 1934 to 1935, published by Her Majesty's Stationery Company. Quite a, a hefty volume. Um, I mean, 
for obvious reasons, even a volume like this trying to cover the entire U-boat war is, you know, is going to have to do it in relatively pricey terms. But you do have quite a lot of handy little maps about the various uh, wolf packs, for example, um, to ship to sinking totals, um, so on and so forth. Um, lots of specific incident reports, and it also comes with this if you get the full volume. Um, which has a number of handy diagrams. Um, this one, for example, U-boat operations in the Atlantic, uh, and then U-boat operations in the North Sea. Uh, now, obviously, this is all a little period. Her Majesty's Stationary Office doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but it's, again, it's a good, if you can get your hands on it, it's a good foundational introduction. And then you can look up some of the more recent stuff thereafter. Sorry, that's quite heavy. Now, what else can we look at? Well, there's a few things. A lot has been written about Bismarck. So there's Ian Ballantyne's excellent series of books. There's The Destruction of the Bismarck uh, by Berkusen and Hervig. Um, this is associated with the Cameron Expedition, which those of you who watch the channel regularly will know I've already done a video on what people try to claim about that particular expedition. They, but uh, that's that. Um, that's some more German U-boat stuff. Now, this is something else. Now, I'm, I'm sure Chris, military aviation history, will be uh, laughing at the fact I have to acknowledge air power. But let's face it, the majority of what the Kriegsmarine was doing was within range of Luftwaffe air support, with the exceptions of the war in the Atlantic for the most part, although even there you do have the Condors. Um, so yeah, the Luftwaffe and the war at sea 1939 to 1945, as seen by officers of the Kriegsmarine and Luftwaffe, is a very handy thing to have because, well, as the title suggests, it's looking at the war at sea and how Goering did or didn't integrate his forces with the Kriegsmarine. And if you neglect that as part of the study of what the Kriegsmarine was and wasn't able to do, you're missing a lot. So definitely recommend that one. Then there's also this one, The Gathering Storm, the Naval War in Northern Europe, 1939, September 39 to April 1940, by uh, Gear H. Ha. Um, this is actually part of a series that he's done. Um, I don't think it, as of yet it covers the entire war. Could be wrong, but... Um, it's definitely very good reading. Uh, it's available. The whole series is very available. And as you can tell, you know, given that's covering only a few months, there's a lot of detail in that. So if you, this is kind of my, my starter off, you want to know what's actually going on in the campaigns, uh, you, you'll be there for a while. But I think the, I mean, there's also a few other niche ones. So the Naval War in the Baltic, 1939-1945, obviously doesn't cover all Kriegsmarine operations, and a lot of people tend to forget that the Baltic and the Black Sea were operational theatres for the Kriegsmarine during World War II. But um, definitely, definitely worth a read. There's actually an awful lot of Kriegsmarine operations in the Baltic. Um, there's uh, a similar one there by Robert Jackson, but again, that's somewhat thinner, so if you're looking to get a single purchase with the maximum detail, I'd go with... Uh, that book that I just recommended. And then to wrap up this particular video, I think we pretty much can't go. I mean, we've, I know we've mentioned Bismarck already a few times, and let, but let's face it, everyone wants to know about Bismarck. But if I was going to recommend one book about Bismarck, then this hefty old thing. Battleship Bismarck, A Design and Operational History by William Garski, Robert Doolin, and William Jurens. Uh, Bill Jurens obviously helped me with the Hood Destruction video, and if you don't know who Garski and Doolin are, well, then you must be new to the world of naval history. So, yeah, Battleship Bismarck, um, published by US Naval Institute Press, uh, amongst others. Definitely, definitely worth a read. It, it is very comprehensive. Um, now, you might be asking why I don't recommend uh, Baron Mulheim von Reichsberg's book about the destruction of Bismarck. Well, as I said, I, I was going to recommend one. Um, if you do 
want to know even more about what happened to Bismarck, then Milhelm Reichsberg's book is a, an excellent purchase. Um, unfortunately, my copy is a digital ebook copy, so I can't show it to you on my shelf, uh, but it's been published and republished so many times, there'll be an affordable copy around here somewhere. Um, now, <laughs> well, what can't you find about Bismarck in this? Well, there's a huge, huge amount, and of course this has been done after the most recent uh, Cameron expedition down to Bismarck, so there's an awful lot of detail, um, you know, the arrangement of rudders and propellers, for example, where the steering rooms are, um, lots of survivors' accounts. I mean, the final battle, we're here in this chapter 21, we're starting at 0930, so actually let's go back a little bit to when the final battle t starts. So that's the torpedo attack. And this is the thing, you say, they're telling you a narrative history as we go through the voyage. So this is the point just after the torpedo attack where she's been crippled, but not only do they tell you what's going on, but you also see photographs from the wreck that illustrate exactly what they're talking about. But nonetheless, that's crippled. And then that's the nighttime destroyer attack. Right, so there you go. The final battle starts at chapter 19, and of the book, it makes up about one third to 40%. So if you want a step-by-step -step walkthrough of what happened in Bismarck's final battle, this is pretty much the thing to go for. Um, there's a damage analysis, there's a bit about the discovery, and then you have the appendixes, this last bit at the back. Um, they even have, a, they have an appendix on the turret problems, they even have an appendix on the scuttling debate <laughs> as to whether or not it was scuttled. Now, if you go to USNI's website, of course, you can get this um, either as a member or as general public. And if you use the code DRACH, so D-R-A-C-H, you can get a nice chunk taken off of the purchase of this book or indeed any other book that you purchase on USNI. There's also a recommended reading page, uh, recommended reading list, I should say, which was composed by me, which you can also find. But um, I'm given to understand there are some copies of this in stock, so you know, now is a good time to grab one. And uh, yeah, very, very, very good book. Um, of course, you know, if it's got those three names on it, you know it's going to be good without opening the cover, but it's definitely worth opening the cover. So apart from that, uh, as I said, there, there are some more generalist books that you can get which are on this shelf. But the, the ones I've got are here are a little, either a little bit older and therefore you might only find them second hand. So I'm not going to cover them in a easy to access intro book um, video, or as I said, they're in German. Um, and you know, the list of German stuff does go on just a little bit. Oh, I've just realized I have two copies of German naval guns, shells and explosives, hues and explosives from 1921 to 22. So if anyone wants a spare copy, I'll probably be disposing of that at some point. Um, yeah, the, my book on Graf Zeppelin's in German, this one on the type, I haven't actually opened this one yet, but this is on the Type 23 U-boat, again in German. This is kind of one of the reasons why I haven't covered too much about the U-boat campaign, because it takes a lot longer to read and transcribe details from German to English than it does just reading it straight from English. It's my small Italian section up there as well. So, Apologies for the kind of left, right, left, right, left, right, but as you can probably tell, I'm, I'm in a bit of a corner here, so that's why. Hopefully the sound is all good, and that wraps up my quick look at some of the introductory books that I'd recommend for looking at ships of the Kriegsmarine. Oh, before we go, Führer Conferences on Naval Affairs 1939 to 1945. Um, definitely worth having a look if you want an insight into what the higher echelons of German command thinking were. Um, if you do. <laughs> Nonetheless, I think that's pretty much it for today. Thanks very much, and see you in another video.